Thanks, Christian. Here with Grandmaster Larry Christensen, who just won his game against the defending champion, uh, Mele Kachan. Uh, Larry, how did you feel about the game today? Well, it was not a bad effort. Um, he, he played like he was a little tired. You know, he played a um, Krakow World Se uh, Senior, mm -hmm. and they just tr they flew from Poland back to the St. Louis. I don't know how they can do it. I, I'd be worn out by now. I'm pretty worn out now. But um, I can. So those guys are fading a little bit. Mr. Novikov, Mr. Shabalov is not playing too well. He was also a Krakow participant, and I. Getting him in the later rounds is useful. Yeah, um, and tell us a little bit about your thoughts uh, about the game. Uh, at what point do you think it started to go your way? Okay, well, the opening was uh, very easy. Um, that knight takes d8 was an important. I mean, that um, bring the knight out uh, to d8 was was important, um, well, allowing him to take and and so forth. So I have a nice game. His bishop on e3 is misplaced. He's got I've got pressure on his center. So he tried to, you know, start forcing matters. Maybe that wasn't the right decision. Yeah, with e5 here. Yeah, I had two. Yeah, e5. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a move. It's a tired kind of move. That's a move I might have made, you know, <laughs> next round. <laughs> so um, here I was thinking hard about bishop takes f3, mm -hmm. and then I think he has to play. Well, bishop takes. I got knight takes e5, and that end game. Rook takes e7. Mm -hmm. I double up all those pawns, or I can take on c3 and yeah. you know torture. The Yasser would go nuts over this position. <laughs> I think. I'm sure <laughs> he'd have a sweet time trying to convert that. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, I decided to play a, long, a more long-term move. Um, yeah, Bishop takes f3 was certainly an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went with Knight takes e3. I'm not 100 percent sure if that was right. And King f8. So I want to basically. You know, maybe bother his rook in various ways. He's got various knight b fives, and I have to watch out for knight g fives and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, that nothing. He had nothing concrete. Maybe he should have played um, knight b five here. Mm -hmm. And if a six, he he buries himself. And goes d knight c seven, and rook b8, knight takes a6, and uh, he's pretty happy, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll get the pawn back. Well, maybe a tiny edge for black. That, you know, bishop takes and the knight back to c6. Right. And uh, Oops, sorry. And, and tiny, he, may, he might throw an e6 or something like that, and I don't think I have, it's probably about equal. Yeah. Um, but he goes e4. Yeah, I, I'm not, uh, e6, now it's getting to the critical point. Um, mm hmm so again, he has knight b, you know, knight b5 here, not so smart. Um, so he did the right move, bishop d3. Yeah. And what did I do? Rook c, I'm going, you know, and he went b3. Maybe he had to play knight b, uh, one, one second. Mm -hmm. Maybe knight b5 here. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much have to play bishop c6, I believe. Yeah. And he takes with a rook on a, rook, the rook oh, on a7. Right. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Wait a second. I don't want that. I had to wait. I, let me go back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I know what to do. I'll go king e8. Put the bishop on b7. You know, king e8 here. Right. That's weird. It, looks, it works somehow for black. And rook is kind of... He goes rook d6. Back, yeah, yeah, now, yeah, he'd love to have some... So a6 here, um, he may have... a6 looks like a tough move to meet. Yeah. And everybody's guarded, and so back he goes, and I'm then I'm you know making good progress. So, knight b5 was a non-starter. Okay. Right. So he went b3, and I went a6. Yeah, and I thought this was a pretty pleasant situation. He went. I don't know what else to do except knight a4, mm -hmm. and then bishop c6. This is routine. Um, take c4. Right. I already envisioned this end game. This you know, a5. I want to keep the structure. Rook a. Rook a6, forest, rook b8, bishop takes, all forest, I believe, knight c6. The poor little rook, and I, he got this idea to try to trade rooks. Otherwise, it's a long term. I'll post, you know, improve my king, right. activate the rook, and, you know, he's got no play whatsoever. It's just pure torture. Yeah, I know you um, then went on to convert this end game. With um, bishop b8, I, was, uh, nice. this, I, like this I knew I was going to win this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the cheapos are in my favor, and. 
I, I had, you know, his poor Rook. You know, I'm, not that I felt too sorry for it, but. Yeah. So the rest of the game was pretty routine. I mean, at the end game, I'm, I'm, I think all the end games are winning mainly because we have the Rook pawns, you know, retained on the A, on the A file. So it um, looked like a pretty routine end game. It's kind of a, an ironic. I won a couple of years ago. I won a similar type of end game against uh, Malekit. Um, so yeah. So Larry, um, last round coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, how do you approach the the final rounds? I know they're always very difficult. Um, well, it's, I'm not. I'm playing for second, third, fourth, or something like that. So I'm not going to be all that. Uh, you know. I'm not going to work myself into exhaustion, but uh, Mr. Root uh, looks like he's in trouble again. He's so uh, unfortunately, chess is a, um, it's a cruel game sometimes. So <laughs> it's like a feeding frenzy if you're not in form. So uh, you know, I'll give it a good shot against Doug tomorrow. Very good. Well, thank you, Larry, for coming in. We'll wish you the best of luck in All the right. final game. Thanks, guys. Back to you. All right. Thank you.